Hi guys, um, it's, it's me, I hope you guys are doing well today, um, let's pray, Father, I thank you for this time together, Lord Jesus, fill my mouth with what you would have me say, permeate the very atmosphere, touch lives, touch hearts, touch spirits, Lord God. Visit everyone today in such a special way that they will never forget hearing this sermon. Change their lives while well, you're changing mine. Speak to me and speak through me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hi guys. Thank you for joining me today. Um, I am such a rom-com. That I know it, they're cheesy and whatever. <laughs> and yesterday, not yesterday, Friday. Sorry, um, Friday. I was watching "Marry Me" with uh, Jennifer Lopez and the guy from Wedding Crashers. I forget his name. Uh, um. I forget. I think it's Owen Wilson, I think. His name is Owen Wilson. So anyway, the the premise of this movie is so funny. It's about this pop star who is like a, a, a Latino pop star and her and her her and her um Latino pop star fiance are streaming uh, the plan is that they would do a concert and then in that concert uh, stream their wedding. And it's this whole thing because they're big stars. But on the day of the wedding, um, she she finds him cheating with his, with her secretary. So not knowing what to do, they've got all these people or whatever. Out of nowhere, she takes a guy from the audience and says, um, because the guy from the audience is holding up a sign that says, Marry Me, because the album is called Marry Me. So, out of nowhere, this guy is holding up a sign called, that said, Marry Me. So, and then she says yes, and then throughout the movie they they hang up together. You know, unlike any good rom com, they they uh, fall in love and whatever. Uh, but I was watching this going going. I, I went like. I have strange thoughts when I'm watching movies. Um, I, um, I honestly don't just watch a movie and say, oh, that's a good movie and whatever. I always have strange kind of intellectual stuff come to me. I said, I wish people would really know who you are, God. And I wish people would be like that with you and not be so hesitant and really know who you are and as I was watching this movie I, I felt the Lord saying that's what I want to say to my bride um, he's like I want I, I, he said I want to propose and I have proposed, but, but parts of her have said yes, and parts of her have said absolutely not. And I think that's why the world is in such chaos and term, turmoil. And I know, like, and when I, I'm not married, but when I think of... God and 
our relationship together. Um, how it's so open and how, like, I kind of talk to him in a non-scary way and in a non-freakish way. I said, I wish the world would know who you really are and, like, what a joy it is to know you and what a joy it is to run to you when things are going going bad or when things are good. And what a joy it is to talk, to know that no matter what is going on, you are still there. And I think my personal thing is, I think the perception of God is totally wrong. I think we think of God as something up there and we don't even know how to bring him close. And I heard a preacher say one time that she was a little uh, thrown because somebody was wearing a t-shirt uh, said, Jesus is my homeboy. And she was a little little thrown because she said, Jesus is not common. How could you just lower him down like that? And my feeling is the fact that God is so individual and the fact that he is so vast and beyond our understanding, um, I think not that he is, not that people bring him down low or whatever, or treat him like just anywhere, like I can do anything or whatever. Um, some people do treat him like that, and believe me, if they do, he will deal with them. Because he doesn't play games. But I think for others, that's the way they they communicate with God. That's the way they can... That's their relationship with God. And the Lord just wants me to say is... The thing that the Lord wants me to say is... Don't judge others' relationship with God because it's not yours. Or it's not the way you were brought up to think of God. He is so vast. He is so big. And he's too big to be put in this relational box that we that we put him in. And we say, God's not there. God's not there. I, I'm telling you that if he isn't there, he's got enough to correct the person on his own. He doesn't need you to, to uh, put the person in relationship with God down or say that's not God in there. There are some things, there are some things that are totally not God and that needs to be corrected. But, but make no mistake, God can defend himself. He doesn't need you to defend him. And in you saying, no, that's not the way we do things or whatever, that could maybe uh, push the person away because they could say, okay, Maybe what I'm, what I'm doing is not right. I'm just not going to do it because I'm not as good as those people. And I just want to say you are as good as those people because there's no, there's no those people in the house of God. We're all the same. We all have faults. We all have issues. We all are dealing with stuff. And no one, no one ever has the right to judge you for for the way you communicate with God or the way you handle things or the way you uh, 
can, uh, the way you talk about things, or even if you're a preacher, the way you preach, um, because we are so quick to, like, if it's not the way we would do it, it's wrong, but it's not, because we are just not the whole world. This world is big, and it's beyond what we could ever imagine. And God is saying, just let's, let's think vast, and let's not judge a relationship, a, a, another person's relationship with God, because it's not ours, or it's not the way we would do things. And yes, there are things that are wrong, but make, make no mistake, God will fix those things. And if the person is not doing things that are right, he, he will make sure, he's got enough to make sure that he corrects them in, the, in a way that they can understand. And so... Today he's saying, I want to come into intimacy with you. I want you to, to marry me. I want to be in your day-to-day. -day. I want. He says, I want to be in your life. I don't want to just be a thing that you read about in the scripture or heard about in the sermon. He's like, I want to be in your life. He's like, I want to watch Netflix with you. I want to raise your kids with you. I want to um, go in that job interview with you. Let me in. Marry me. He's like, I'm sick of dating you. You know, you know some people some people, they date forever and ever, especially in this society, but they don't want commitment. They, they date forever and ever without marriage, and they even, they even pretend like they're married and live together, but they refuse to put on the commitment of marriage. He's like, some of you are doing that spiritually. You're dating God. You're you're um, trying to see if this thing works. You've even got the ring. You even got his ring on, which is the acceptance of salvation. But you're you're not. Re you refuse to commit because you're scared of getting hurt. And he and God saying, I understand that you're afraid of getting hurt, but I need you to understand that I won't hurt you. And there is there is nothing about you that I don't know, and I won't hurt you. I won't scar you. I know they hurt you, and you're afraid. You're afraid, and sometimes you've been in church for years, but you are still afraid um, to give your whole self to God. You are afraid to get intimate with God. You, you pray when things are going wrong, and you even pray when things are going right, and you read your record, and you may even read your requisite scripture, or you may not, or you may listen to a sermon. But when, when, the, when the pastor says, God spoke to me and whatever, you're like, I wish God would speak to me. But the thing about, about you is, you're so far from him, but he wants to be so close with you. And, and you've not only put up walls with people because they've hurt you, you've put up walls with God, and it's, and it's time 
to take those walls down. It's time to take those walls down and understand that God is not like man and he knows you're scared and, and he'll take it one at a t one step at a time and you won't you won't have to be afraid. He'll he'll take your hand and guide you through the dark. All you have to do is say whatever is in your heart, whatever place you're at and say, Lord, I need you, Lord, I, whatever you want to say. There's no specific fancy word that you have to say to get into the kingdom of God. Of God. Just tell him where you are. Like, it's just so, and it is the most amazing thing ever. Um, I was uh, listening to uh, a podcast the other day, and um, uh, it was it was with Elizabeth Gilbert, and she was telling about her story about uh, her. She was talking about her book, and her friend was dying of cancer, and then. She realized she was, well, in love with that same-sex friend, and she was telling her story, and, and, and she was talking about how the friend kind of, uh, visited her, and how, you know, she was telling that after the friend died, some some stuff happened uh, to let her, let her think that the friend was still with her. And as I was thinking about this, because I'm a very analytical person, so as I, as I s stepped back and thought about that, I said, God, I said, you're... I said, you're so trying to get to your people. Like, not only Christian people, but I said, you're trying to get to, um, people, um, in whatever way they'll accept you. Because I, I don't personally think, this is only my personal opinion, I don't personally think that people come back from the dead and speak to you and whatever and all that stuff. What I think happens is um, when, when someone dies and God wants to um, get to that person and comfort that person and love that person, and show love to that person, but they don't know him. What I think he does is show off himself using the guise of that person just so that the person that is living feels loved and feels cared for and feels like um, somebody is still with them. So... Let's say when your when your loved one was alive, they liked you liked a certain song, and um, when that friend dies, you hear that song everywhere. And when you hear that song, you think of that person. I think that is God's way of just saying, "I'm here for you. I love you." I, I just want you to know that I'm here. Those are for people who don't know him. Now, for oh, those of us who do, he could show up strongly as God. But because he loves the world, I think even when somebody's grieving, he will show up for them. In, in sometimes very vocal ways, sometimes 
not so vocal ways. It depends. Because he's so desperate to be close to his bride that I think that's what he does when people have passed on just to comfort us and to be with us. So, um, or he may do, like, if that person hated a certain thing or loved a certain thing or whatever had had a certain thing with the living person, he may cause that thing to happen just so you know that he, he is still there and he still loves you even if you think it's the person that is doing it it's him because he loves you so much and he wants you uh, to know that he is there for you and so for us as for, for Christian believers now he can show himself um, right out there, and he knows that we won't run, but for non-believers, he has to kind of disguise himself, because he doesn't want to freak people out, uh, so this is what, this is what I've, um, what I talk, what I talk about, um, with him and and you know it's funny when you have a real relationship with God uh, you can actually ask him questions not only about your own life but about how he feels about things in that same interview they kept on referring to uh, God as the universe and God and whatever and uh, Oprah asked what do you what do you like to call it do you like to call it the universe do you like to call it God do you like to call it this and I said to the Lord I said doesn't that hurt you when they say the the, the God of the when they say you're just the universe, or the universe is really um, telling me to do this, or the universe says this. And he says, I just have to love them until, until they know who I really am. He says, I just love them until they come to the knowledge of who I really am. And if they never come to the knowledge of who I really am, I still love them. I still care about them. And I said, wow. I said, oh, I said, wow. <laughs> that's, that's really something. Because I said, if if I'm doing things for people and they're kind of attributing it to some something else, that would make me mad. Like, um, like if I'm doing something for per, for a person and they're saying, "Oh, this is wonderful," that would that that would make me mad that they're not acknowledging it. With, it's me. And he said, no, it doesn't make me mad. It just makes me want to love them more. Because I know that they're broken. And I know that they need me. And I thought, oh my gosh, that is so wonderful. And I, first of all, let me say my, my opinion. Let me in insert here my opinion uh, between God and the universe, <laughs> uh, that whole thing. I believe that God is a, is a, was here from the beginning. He was here before all of us. 
and he created the universe. I don't believe that he is the universe. I believe that God is um, a, a non-created being which was here from the beginning. And he created the universe. He created the world. I don't believe that he is the universe. And I don't believe that the universe and God are the same thing. I believe that the universe, the cosmos, where the planets and all the stars, that is the universe. But God is a separate non-created being who was here and looks on us and is with us in our daily lives. And I believe that human beings were created in the image of God. I believe that he wanted so someone like himself and we were created in his image. So all of the emotions that we have, the anger, the frustration, the sadness, whatever emotions we have, he has as well. And I, and he has such tremendous love for us such love beyond anything you could ever imagine that he sent his son and when i say his son i mean um i mean the fact that jesus is him came from him down to earth to shed his blood and die on a cross for us so that we wouldn't have to struggle. I think the, the greatest thing about the cross is not that we get to go to heaven or, or we get forgiven of our sins. Those are, I think, byproducts of what the cross is really about. I think, to my mind, the cross is the greatest expression of love in history. I'll say that again. To my way of thinking, the cross is less about being forgiven for sins and going to heaven when we die than it is about the greatest expression of love in history. And he's saying, he's saying, he, he's proposing today to you. He's saying, marry me. He's saying, he's saying, Stop dating me. Stop just going to church on a Sunday and reading, like, some of you even read your Bible during the week, but there's still this wall. There's still this wall, and he wants to break down that wall today and really be intimate with you and really just be in your life and be in your business and st stop holding him at arm's length. Stop like just thinking that like lifted hands on a Sunday or one scripture uh, every day during the week is a relationship. That's not a relationship. That's uh, something you feel you have to do. And yes, read the scriptures, and yes, go to church and worship on Sunday. But he wants more than that. He, he doesn't just want your sin. He wants you. Okay, let me rephrase that. He doesn't want your sin at all. He wants you. And with that... 
when he gets you, he'll get everything that comes with you. He'll get your sin. He'll get your successes. He'll get everything. And he'll work it all out. He'll send resources and, and people to, to work it all out. But he doesn't just want your sin. Or he just... He doesn't just want what you think is wrong with you. He wants you. He wants your heart. He wants your soul. And he doesn't just want it in a cute little song. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. That's a cute little song. But he wants... But he wants... He wants it to be real. He doesn't just want a cute little song. It's nice to sing it, but it's so hard to live it because we're so used to just doing things on our own and being self-sufficient. But today, it's time to turn from being self-sufficient to being God-sufficient. And when you build that trust and lean on God, your life doesn't stop from trouble. It never does. But it gets easier to lean on somebody. There is nothing like when you're going through a hard time and you you can call a friend and, you know, that friend can be with you, whatever. But the first uh, uh, friend that God wants, you, God wants you to have is him. And he wants the relationship to go beyond the surface today. He, I believe that God's saying that he wants to go deeper with you. He wants to go to the mirror of your bones. He wants to be on in Netflix movies with you. He wants to be in your life. He wants to help you in the moment talk to your children. He wants to be, be with you when you're looking for schools to go to or when you're looking for jobs. He wants to be in that with you. And a lot, and some preachers say he doesn't care about the details, but I think he does. He cares about everything in your life. He cares about big stuff. He cares about little stuff. He cares about whatever. But it's how close you bring him. And when, when he gets close enough, he won't tell you everything to do, but you'll know when he's speaking to you. You'll know when that little tug is happening, and you'll know when he's when he like doesn't doesn't really your your opinion for that thing doesn't really matter. Like no, you'll know when he doesn't, because there are some stuff in your life. That, that it won't really make a difference. Like, Lord, do I wear red or do I wear blue today? It doesn't make a difference. But you'll know when things do make a difference if you have that relationship with him. Lord, do I have pancakes today or toast? M might not matter, but you'll know when things do matter. And, and judging on your relationship with God, you'll know how he speaks to you, how he walks with you, how he talks with you. And some people say, how do I know the voice of God in my life or whatever? And what I say is, uh, some people would say the word, some people would say with, uh, different things. But, but I, what I would say is, it just takes time to develop that relationship. 
And God has many different relationships with all his people. Every every relationship that God has is is very different. The core principles in the word of God are the same, but the um the details are different. Core principles are the same, but the details are different. And how he speaks to you is not how he speaks to me. And how, what he does, the process that I am walking through is not going to be the process that, that you are walking through. Even though we might have some of the same challenges because we're human, how he deals with me is not going to be how he deals with you. And that's what I, that's why I said that everybody's walk is different. And you can't judge your walk based on uh, what you see somebody else go through. And, and one last thing is I was thinking of this uh, the other day. Um, that the world's obsessed with happiness and pleasure. And it's like... As long as you're happy, that's okay, whatever, 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 whatever. And, and whatever they say. But I was thinking about, you know, um, I was thinking about this whole idea of happiness. And I was thinking, um, um, you could be, and this thing, and this thing came to me. He said, you could be happy in anything. You could be satisfied in anything. But is it God's best for you? You could be happy uh, in a relationship, but is that God's best for you? Or you could be fulfilled doing something, but is that God's best for you? So is that what God would have you to, to uh, do? Because sometimes you're happy with something, but or you have a good feeling with something, but it is not where God wants you to be. Uh, sometimes it is, but the Lord doesn't measure his success on your pleasure always. He measures his success in your life by his purpose. So, are you achieving? Achieving pleasure is, is great, but are you in his purpose for your life? Because I believe that he has a purpose for your life. He has his purpose for your life. And if you're not in that purpose, even though you may be feeling pleasure, um, you cannot have real fulfillment. That's what I believe. Real fulfillment is being in his purpose for your life. Yes, you can be happy uh, uh, having having sex every night with a different partner. But is that his purpose for your life? Uh, and the only person who can answer that question is you. Whether you're in his purpose for your life, or whether you're just in pleasure. Or whether you're just having fun or being happy. And there is nothing wrong with being happy. Being happy is wonderful. Having overflowing joy is one of the fruits of the Spirit. 
and being happy in this situation is wonderful. But are are you being happy all the time without being in his purpose for your life? Because I believe that purpose is not yours. I believe that purpose is his. He gives everyone based on their gifts and their talents up his purpose for their lives. So we often say, what's your purpose? But I believe it's not your purpose. It's his purpose working through you to achieve his best for your kingdom, for the kingdom of God in your life. So, purpose is not yours. It's his purpose working through you to achieve his best for the kingdom and your life. And the life that he's given you. So guys, thank you so much for, for being with me for this. Uh, a sermon called Marry Me, and I hope it helped you. It really helped me, and I hope I was able to convey what what he what the Lord was speaking to me. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Marry me, marry me, say yes. Marry me, marry me, say yes. That's uh, the song in the movie. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. Bye. I can love you like that. I will make you my world. We'll have it in earth. If you're my girl, I will give you my heart. Be all that you need. Show you your everything that's precious to me. If you give me a chance, I can love you like that. Um, one more thing. He wants me to say that all the movies that you watch, all the romantic movies that you watch, and all the guys and girls and stuff that you hope for, um, he can give that to you in a spiritual way so that when you get it in a physical way, then you understand that it's real. Because I think the spiritual world, no, the physical world is meant to mirror the spiritual world. And when you get a close relationship with God and can, can discern and can talk real to God and can communicate with God, then you understand how to physically move in relationships. Maybe the fact that your physical relationships are bust, or the fact that you you are um, just searching for a man or searching for a woman, and you're like just so lost going from relationship to re relationship. Maybe that's a picture that your spiritual relationship is not right with the Lord. Maybe you're trying to find something physically that you first need spiritually so that when you get it physically, you understand that, yes, this is the real thing. Don't get me wrong. God is not meant to fulfill any physical uh, sexual needs but he can show you a spiritual picture of what 
a real relationship with what a God ordained relationship with a person is is supposed to feel like. He did it with me, so that's how he, I know he can do it. And I'm still, um, and I still say that he is willing to do it for you as well. Bye, guys. I'll see you later. If you want tenderness, I've got tenderness. It'll save you too. Just a heart of you. If you want who will understand? You don't have to look very far. And he also wants me to tell you that he understands exactly where you are, exactly where you're going through, what you're going through. And he said, come as you are. Come as you are. You don't have to change. You don't have to dress yourself up. Come as you are with your past or whatever it is. Come if you're, come if you were a good girl. Come if you were, um, a bit, um, wayward. Come whatever issues you have, and he, and you don't have to change because he will direct you if and when to change and how to change, and he will bring the people and the resources you need to accomplish his purpose in your life. And his love is real. His love is real and everlasting. And he will never, ever, ever leave you. He'll always be there for you. Even though you feel sometimes he's not there. He's still working. Even... Even when I can't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel that you're working, you never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel that you're working, you never stop. And now it's all working. He's working for you. Jesus wants me to say he's praying for you. And he loves you so much. I will see you later, guys. Bye. You are here. Moving in this place, I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Moving in this place, I worship you. I worship you. God wants to give you a real light. You've been walking around in the phony for too long, saying that things are all right when things are falling apart, but God wants to give you a real life today. He wants to give you life and life more abundantly. And all I, and all I say um, to accept Christ is just, Tell him where you are, tell him what you want, tell him what you need from him. And uh, some people, most preachers do a sinner's prayer. I don't do that because I want people to communicate with God the way they do, uh, the way they, they operate. I don't want to put words in people's mouths. Um, 
and there's no need for simple prayer because there's no perfect prayer there's no perfect words that you can say so just pour out your heart to him tell him what you need from him tell him what you feel from him whatever even if you're broken and you don't know if this is real you think this thing is crazy um, you can tell him that and he'll take where you are and lead you to where you want to be. All you have to do is ask. In your own way. And if you need my help, uh, feel free to Facebook me after that. Or YouTube me if you're watching this on YouTube. Or leave a comment on both. Whatever. I, I check them regularly. And I'd be happy to help you. Take care. Bye, beloved.